Hi, my name is Ulysses. You're watching Livestream Ninja. This is episode number three. In this episode, we'll talk about codecs, containers, and protocols. So what is a codec? A codec is a software or process for compressing media so they can be put on a file or stored on the file and played back later on a device. So here are some of the more common video codecs that's used in live streaming. <clears throat> First, there's H.264. It's actually called MPEG-4 Part 10. And uh, it's the most commonly used codec for recording, compression, and distribution. It's widely used. And then there's X.264, which is built on top of H.264. It's the open source version of the H.264. It's got its own library. And then there's a newer H.265, which is also known as um, high efficiency video coding. And it, this particular version will support up to 8K Ultra HD video. Um, we're talking 8192 by 4320 pixels. Um, then there's the VP series of uh, proprietary codecs developed by Antu Technologies. Uh, they started, uh, started out with VP6 and VP7. And then Google uh, joined the fray and they developed VP8 in conjunction with Antu Technologies. And then uh, Google started working on the next version, which is VP9 which is a royalty-free version of uh, uh, this um, codec. Uh, in fact, uh, WebRTC uses VP9 um, uh, codec. Now let's talk about audio codecs. There's AAC, uh, which is Advanced Audio Codec, which is Advanced Audio Codec. It's a lossy digital audio compression, and it's not actually owned by Apple as many people believe. It was brought to the mainstream by Apple when they introduced the iPod. And then there's MP3. MP3 is actually MPEG-2 layer three. Uh, that's where it gets the three on the MP3. It's the lossy digital uh, audio compression, and it's the de facto standard for audio compression. So let's talk about containers next. Containers, so what are containers? Containers are files that contain your video and audio streams, and they usually include uh, metadata and also closed captioning uh, data. Uh, when you think of container, you have to think of a file type. You have to think of the format. So containers are usually associated with the file extension. So here are some of the more common containers used for live streaming. Uh, there's FLV or Flash Video Format, which is developed by Adobe. And then there's MP4, which is based on the MPEG-4 standard and uh, FYI YouTube actually accepts both FLV and MP4 for uploads. Uh, then Microsoft came out with their own version which is Microsoft Windows Media Video. And then Apple has QuickTime with their .mov uh, container. And then there's MPEG-TS which is, stands for MPEG Transport System. And then there's the open version, uh, OGG, which is an op open container format, which is maintained by ziff.org. Lastly, we'll talk about protocols. So what are protocols? A protocol is a standard used for defining methods on how data is exchanged between computers. Uh, an example, of is uh, how data is formatted, how data is sent, how it's received, how it's uh, compressed, and how errors are handled. Uh, there's uh, IP-based uh, and HTTP-based protocol. Let's look at the uh, IP-based first. Uh, there's real-time transport protocol. 
uh, or RTP. It's been around for a while. It started in 2003. And actually, RTP is a family of protocols. So there's two main versions. There's RTSP, which stands for Real-Time Streaming Protocol, and operates in the transport layer of the OSI network model. And then there's RTCP, which stands for Real-Time Control Protocol, and that operates in the session layer of the OSI model. And then there's RTMP, which was developed by Macromedia, uh, which was later acquired by Adobe. Uh, it's the gold standard for publishing live streams. Uh, in fact, a lot of software and hardware encoders use the RTMP protocol to connect to the live streaming server. So, uh, so there's software and hardware encoders that use RTMP. And examples are Wirecast, vMix, um, open broadcasting software, uh, XSplit, all use RTMP protocol to live stream. Uh, it's, the, it's also, if you look at all the streaming services that are out there, uh, for example, YouTube, Facebook Live, uh, Wowza, they all ingest RTMP stream. Then there's the HTTP version uh, protocols. Uh, Apple came out with the HTTP live stream or HLS. And the nice thing about HLS is that it plays on all platforms. Um, uh, then uh, Adobe came out with their own version, which is HDS. It's HTTP dynamic streaming. Microsoft also came out with their own version, which uh, they call Microsoft Smooth uh, Streaming. Um, this requires a Silverlight plugin on the playback on the browser. Then there's the standard, um, which is the future of live streaming. Um, uh, it's called Dash, which, which stands for Dynamic Adaptive um, Streaming over HTTP. And the nice thing about Dash is that um, it is codec agnostic, so it will play on any codec that you use for compression. And it's not fully supported yet like uh, HLS. Um, there's a, a couple of uh, browsers that Dash will not work, but eventually I think Dash is going to be the future for playback. Um, so at the moment, HLS uh, plays on all platforms. Uh, RTMP requires Flash. Um, and obviously at one point, that um, Flash was ubiquitous. It was everywhere and it's on, on every computer. But um, Apple uh, did not support it on some of the iOS devices and then their iPhone. Uh, and now, Google Chrome and other browsers are now dropping support for for Flash because you know uh, it's a plugin to it, it's uh, not secure and there's uh, and then you have to users have to install it uh, and there's more support for HTTP video or HTML5 video I would say so that's the story or codecs, containers, and protocols. So don't forget to follow and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.